Hey, what's up guys? It's Marf and welcome back to another video. I apologize that it's not asphalt or racing related. There just really isn't much going on, not only in Asphalt 9, but in the mobile racing game world. There is that one asphalt game that has sort of been leaked and all of that sort of stuff. I won't be covering that until there's a more official version of it, whether it be a soft launch or the full launch, whatever comes first. I definitely want to play that game, but I don't really want to get into any sort of trouble and if you would like to learn more about that game there are plenty of videos on it right now and i'm sure you know what i'm talking about but today i went back and i played some nova 3 multiplayer because i have not played multiplayer in nova 3 for a very very long time and it popped up uh because i was going back and playing a lot of older uh, mobile FPS and racing games like the older Asphalt titles some weird Fast and Furious games and all of that and I was like I wonder if Nova 3 multiplayer is still alive now unfortunately the premium edition of Nova 3 so the version that's actually been updated to work on you know newer iOS devices that does not seem to be working for online multiplayer which kind of sucks but if you have a device at least on iOS that can run below or at iOS 10 you can actually download the Freedom Edition, which was the free-to-play version that they released a couple of years after the regular version launched, and those multiplayer servers still seem to be working, and I was surprised to find a lot of people still actively playing it, and I jumped into some matches, and before I knew it, I was playing for five or six hours straight because it's just such an addicting experience, and I want to discuss why Nova 3's multiplayer was so successful and that I just miss this type of gameplay so much. At the core of why I think Nova 3's multiplayer is so good is because of its simplicity. And sometimes the phrase less is more is really the correct phrase and that applies to Nova 3's multiplayer. It's simple arena futuristic combat. You hop into a game and you have fun. So the simplicity comes with the lack of all the things that make modern shooters overly complicated and annoying like hero abilities and other gimmicks that can really ruin the fun of the core concept of a first person shooter. And that's why I think less is more is such a good statement for Nova 3's multiplayer. There's not a bunch of crap piled on to the core mechanics to where it feels, well, not like a first person shooter anymore. Other games can start feeling like other types of genres before they feel like a first person shooter. Now, obviously, if it were the same thing over and over again, that would get pretty boring pretty quickly. And so the biggest shifts in gameplay from Nova 3 come with the different game modes, which is what game modes are supposed to do. Cough, Asphalt 9, Cough. Instagib is personally my favorite mode because everyone is truly on a level playing field and it is the easiest and fastest way to rack up a bunch of kills and some nice kill streaks. On the other hand, Freeze Tag is one of the most unique multiplayer modes I have ever experienced in a very long time. And while Nova 3 was pretty active, I actually didn't play a lot of Freeze Tag because it wasn't a very popular game mode, but for some reason now it is one of the most popular game modes to play and I just love, you know, getting frozen and then waiting for my teammate and just watching people duke it out, but also, you know, fighting a enemy player while unfreezing my teammates. It really does bring that camaraderie to Nova 3, which typically plays in a more free-for-all game mode. And as mentioned, free-for-all, free-for-all and deathmatch are always stable choices that are included in Nova 3's multiplayer experience. So back to the maps for a second, because I think the map design in this game is absolutely amazing. All of the maps feel completely distinct from one another, ranging from obviously the graphics and the atmosphere, but just from the wide variety of scale and scope. So they range from open desert fields on a map like Badlands to very close quarters intricate combat such as Warehouse. And there's just a wide variety of experiences to have. And there is really something for everyone, whether you like to snipe from a very far distance or you want to get up close and personal with a shotgun, there's everything for you. So going back to the lack of complexity, in Nova 3, there's no insta-kill abilities or giant bomber kill streaks. And sure, there are kill streaks and perks and things that do spice up the gameplay, but the kill streaks are passive aids like a radar scanner and the ability to hide from other people's radar. And the perks in this game only provide small percentage buffs that honestly are very difficult to notice in game. Over my almost like seven or eight years of playing this game, you really don't notice what perks are good or not because you just really don't notice them at all. 
And this is why a game like Bullet Force was so successful back in the day, because it was a refreshing experience from the chaotic complexities of something like Modern Combat 5. Bullet Force was just, here's a gun, go shoot people. But Nova 3, because it just hasn't received updates or a new entry into the series, just remains at its purest form. And that purity is what is so good about its multiplayer. So going back to the guns for a second, while there is certainly a best loadout, for example, you'll see a lot of people killing me with RPGs and the C4 because, you know, you could just jetpack into the air and then rocket launch the person below you, which does get annoying, but every single weapon is still perfectly viable except for maybe one or two exceptions. And you'll see in this video that I use the plasma gun and the shotgun a lot because on this account that I'm playing on, I haven't actually unlocked all of the guns in the game, but I perfectly get more kill streaks and I can pick up other people's guns and the pickups on the map and I'm perfectly fine. But anyway, talking about the balance, the feeling of the weapons are all very punchy and what's nice is that they all look and sound unique. And so regarding that weapon selection, the list is small relatively because each gun fulfills a distinct role and gameplay experience. There's no need for 20 different rifles and 15 different handguns. And while of course you want to argue that in a game like Call of Duty, one of the experiences is trying out all the different modern guns like the M16 and all that sort of stuff. In Nova 3, it isn't really about trying different flavors of guns that are very small differences. It's just about what purpose does this weapon fulfill and then moving on to the next one. Of course, you can't mention Nova 3 without mentioning the futuristic setting. And that's something that's very unique in today's market. And I feel like the popularity of that futuristic setting has really declined, at least in the mobile space. And we've seen a lot of push for modern first person shooters like COD Mobile, PUBG, Obviously, the, there's no really time setting of those, but obviously you have those modern weapons and a modern look to it. There's no laser cannons or anything like that. And it just provides that unique experience. And sometimes just looking different can feel different, if you know what I mean. And so while there are plans for something like Battlefield coming to mobile, there is no big AAA franchise that is in the futuristic setting like Halo coming to mobile anytime soon. And that's why Nova 3, even though it's so old, feels so fresh to me. Now, a very long time ago, I made a video about why I think Nova 3 was just the best mobile game ever made, and I stand by that statement. But one of the things that I mentioned in that video was just the quality of this game. And that was something present in pretty much every single game loft game that came out during that generation, whether it was Gangstar Vegas or Modern Combat 4. The atmosphere was just on point. There was a bunch of unique sounds and they all matched the quality in terms of the graphics. You don't really notice you're in a mobile game. I find that playing modern games like PUBG Mobile and Call of Duty Mobile tend to look very flat and the lighting doesn't match what the textures are. Nova 3 doesn't have any of those problems. You have lens flares and those dusty things on your visor and it just makes for a very next generation feeling game. Even though this game is very old at this point, I still think it looks absolutely amazing. And lastly, of course, because this is an analysis of this game, you can't really get away from subjective points of view. And it is no secret that I am nostalgic for this game. And you can't escape nostalgia when you're talking about something that someone has experienced that is an old part of their life, I guess you could say. It's hard to explain, but nostalgia is definitely one of those reasons why I have enjoyed going back and playing this game. Because if there was a new Nova 3 or a new Nova 4, I guess, would I really enjoy it? I want to say I would, but one of the biggest reasons is just remembering the fond memories of playing on my old iPod Touch and having a blast in multiplayer. And while I would like to hope that objectively this game is really good, I won't deny the fact that I enjoy this game because I already enjoyed this game. It's enjoying something that I already enjoyed and it's remembering these really awesome experiences that I had during a time where not all gaming feels like fun. It can feel like work sometimes and Nova 3 just feels like a game more than it does anything else. But of course, let me know your thoughts on Nova 3 in the comment section down below and I will see you guys later.